Designing your life as a guide to help anyone learn how to think like a designer. Have you ever thought of changing direction in life? How do you like to begin? Many people may be afraid to even take the first step to change. The program Designing Your Life at Stanford University in the U.S. is seeking to help students in designing their lives. The program turned out to be quite highly in demand. Professor Bill Burnett, co-author of the book Designing Your Life, was in Bangkok recently. I asked him why finding passion is not the first step. Designing your life, you emphasize that our life shouldn't begin with passion. Can you just elaborate a little bit more? If you, if you have a passion, if you've discovered something very early in your life that you want to do, and you're still doing it, no problem. That's excellent. Um, and it turns out, if you look at the research, passions most frequently emerge in the arts early. So if you knew you wanted to be a dancer or a singer or a writer, that might have been an early passion that does get realized later in life. But the research also says that eight out of ten people have no identifiable passion. And so we call it a dysfunctional belief in the book because it's, it's like, well, eight out of ten people can't answer the question. Mm -hmm. And then inside the question, do you have a passion, you feel like, well, if I don't have one, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe everyone else has one. But it's not true. Eight out of ten people cannot identify a single passion for their life or their career. So we just don't like the question because it, it leaves so many people feeling like they've done something, there's something wrong, and there's nothing wrong. In Thailand, the buzzword is very much in vogue right now. It's about design thinking. Yes. What's the similarities between design thinking and designing your life? Do you think it's the same concept? Well, absolutely. I mean, so when, um, when we, Dave and I first got together, we were thinking about how to help our students because they were confused and they weren't sure how to get a job and they weren't sure that. And so originally we were just thinking, well, we'll just do a small seminar on finding a job. But then it turned into more and more. And what happened is I realized, because my, my main role as a professor, as an adjunct professor, is to teach design thinking to students and to produce designers. My students work at Apple and Facebook and LinkedIn and, uh, and, and one of my students, uh, Evan Spiegel, started Snapchat. So we have, my students go out and they work in all the companies using design thinking. And then I realized, well, wait a minute, we could use design thinking for life design. It's the same principles. A prototype is how we build our way forward. Um, brainstorming is odyssey plans. Um, we use mind mapping in the book. We use many design. I want to make sure the book always has design techniques in it. So when you leave, when you finish, like when you finish the class, you're better at having ideas. You're better at brainstorming. You're better at coming up with alternatives. And the same thing is true in life design. You need lots of alternatives to try. And so we found that every step in design thinking had a parallel step in life design. Rawit Hanusaha, CEO of Sijan. One of business leaders in Thailand adopts regular practice on designing life and he has some recommendations for the new generation. What do you like to tell the new generation, especially millennials who are still finding ways trying to design their life? Should they try to accomplish in designing their life from the very beginning in the journey of their life or just carry on pursuing their path? Well, I think the, the most important thing about designing life is that you can't really have the whole plan yet. And this is, this is I think, the most important part of, of this whole thing. You have to actually kind of try new stuff, and then you're going to see whether this works for me or not, and then you keep going. By stop trying, stop asking questions, that's when kind of your design thing kind of collapse, I think. You have to start, you know, you have to always ask questions, question, always be curious about something, and, and try them. The most important part is trying. This is where people kind of fear doing like new stuff, but it's actually not that, you know, it's, it's not that like fearful per, per se. I mean, it's not that, um, it's not that scary. So, so doing new stuff, it's much easier than thinking about doing new stuff, I would say that. That's one thing. The other thing is that, uh, don't forget that everything starts from yourself. So by taking care of yourself, I mean, this is like mentally and, you know, physically and stuff, it's the most important part because if you don't take care of yourself when you're young, 
it's gonna pace the toll for you when you're getting older and, and you're getting older one day. So you're not gonna be able to do things you love or even designing any kind of life if you don't really you know, have a, a, a healthy mind and body. I think, so I think that's another important part to, to thinking about. Uh, I, I love that the trend is coming this way towards a healthier lifestyle, but you, know, you have to keep reminding yourself always that you're gonna do great things um, but you have to, you know, have, it starts from having healthy mind and body. Taking this approach, it seems clear that life begins with a small step. And experimenting life without aiming at achieving too grand plan, you can probably become a designer of your own life. Natar Gomonwadin, Thai PBS World Reports. <laughs>